AFA today on AFR Talk. Uh, so glad that you're with us uh, here in the middle of the day as we try to take a look at what's going on in the headlines for you. Kevin McCullough is my name, and we are coming to you from the uh, shadow of the Freedom Tower uh, and just north of Trinity Church. And if you're watching on the screen, uh, the charging bull of Wall Street uh, that is on that uh, screenshot, just not even 200 feet from uh, the front door of this very building. So uh, that's where we're at. If you're ever in New York City, you're always invited uh, to come see us and to come be part of the broadcast. We have uh, extra chairs, <laughs> and it's always fun. And some of you have taken advantage of that. So uh, never never hesitate to uh, drop me an email, kmcradio at gmail.com, if you're coming through the Big Apple. Um, Let's see what I want. Okay. Kevin McCall is my name, 888-589-8840, triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Uh there's lots of news to get to. The Pentagon and the House made a decision over the weekend. Uh better to cut troop personnel than to cut benefits for our military. Now, I'm not really in favor of cutting either. I think military spending is one of those areas where uh Someone asked me the other day, do you really believe that we could? We, it's almost impossible to spend too much on the military? And I'm, I'm kind of the, the opinion that it is. I'm kind of of the opinion that it is almost kind of impossible to spend too much on our troops. I just, I just, we're, we're, in, we're in that big of a need to them. But what these guys decided was, is that uh, very clearly they have said what we're going to do is instead of uh, cutting benefits to all the troops, we're just going to lay people off. So at the end of the day, I guess it's better for everybody except for the ones that lose their jobs. However that works. Uh, 888-589-8840. And then I don't know if you heard about this. Did you hear about the Nigerian girls that got um, kidnapped? Really, really, an Islamic fundamentalist group, uh, Bako, Boko Haram, went into Nigeria and kidnapped literally hundreds, maybe more than 200 schoolgirls from a, from a school. And uh, it happened on April the 14th. There was uh, a massive explosion that killed uh, a bunch of people some 75 hours later. But this is, this is just hideous stuff. I mean, and they're just taken, put into slavery, sold, you know, all kinds of horrible, horrendous things. Uh, Secretary of State Kerry saying he's going to make sure that uh, Americans do something to help out in the situation, and I hope that uh, he's I hope that he's correct. Uh, but this this is a story here. A number of years ago, <clears throat> about uh, nine years ago, nine ten years ago to be exact, um, there was uh, there was a young man coming up through the Episcopal Church. And this man coming up through the Episcopal Church, his name was Gene Robinson. And Gene Robinson was made out to be a hero amongst the gay rights movement. Uh, he had sold a uh, load of bricks to people saying that he had been discriminated against and he was being treated harshly and unfair. And he went on media and he was like, I don't know how my church can get away with this. And there, was, there were all these assumptions and things said about uh, the Episcopal Church, that Gene Robinson said, that, that made the Episcopal Church look very bad in the eyes of the media. And then came time for him to be promoted to bishop. And when it came time as a priest to be promoted to bishop in the Episcopal Church, uh, the church nearly fell apart. In fact, a lot of people believe that it did in the argument over whether or not a practicing homosexual, a man engaged in homosexual behavior, at the time living an adulterous relationship uh, uh, with his, uh, with his uh, uh, lover, he had, he had left his wife, he had left his uh, spouse, he would left his uh, daughters. And so they, uh, they, and it nearly ripped the church stem from stem. I mean, just, just right down the middle, some of the congregations were very conservative, uh, believe in biblical authority. Some of them are uh, are not, and saying, you know, we, this is old. We got to get more modern. There's all these uh, there's all these uh, back and forths. And what what they had to do was what they had to come to the realization was is make a decision on whether or not they were going to allow this guy to serve as bishop or not. So they ended up allowing it. And for nine years, he was the uh, the bishop over uh, da, 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 the diocese of New Hampshire. 
Um, and then he retired in, in 2012. Now, what's interesting about this? Well, over the weekend, he filed for divorce from his now husband. Um, his now husband, Mark Andrew, um, and he evidently don't get along anymore. Uh, now, they've been together for 25 years. Which is interesting because I don't I, I'm 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 thinking that Gene Robinson's daughters are only in their late thirties, maybe early forties, something like that. But uh, but uh, you've got you've got a very interesting scenario here in which I think all kinds of uh, garbage has been um, floated about and very little actual uh, critical thinking about any of it. Uh, he went on to say in the announcement of his divorce from his husband that um, he says it is at least a small comfort to me as, as a gay rights and marriage equality advocate to know that like any marriage, gay and lesbian couples are subject to the same complications and hardships that afflict marriages between heterosexual couples. All of us sincerely intend when we take our wedding vows to live up to the ideal of till death do us part, but not all of us are able to see through, see this through until death indeed parts us. Well, thank you, Captain Obvious, for the uh, statistical lesson in uh, marriage there. Uh, do you know what the breakup rate amongst uh, homosexual lovers is? It's, it's far worse than the divorce rate in the, um, in the heterosexual community. In fact, about 70% of heterosexuals uh, will get married and stay married to the person that they marry. Now, people tout this 50% divorce rate. But that includes all divorces that are ever committed, and you have some in the divorce category that are just serial divorcers. You know, they get married, then they get divorced. They get married again, they get divorced again. They get married again, they get divorced again. But heterosexuals that, that actually enter into marriage, the real statistic, about 70, 7 out of 10 of those will stay married for life to the person that they get married to. Uh, that are the 30%, uh, you know, they, half of them do the serial thing, and that's where you get the 50% uh, divorce rate. But anyway, um, so you've got you've got this this the wheels coming off of this guy's relationship with his his gay lover, and I thought at the time, and I covered this at the time, eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Would love to know your thoughts on on all of this. Um, but when when he was presiding, desiring to preside as bishop over the. Uh, diocese of New Hampshire, and he was willing to rip his church's heart out, uh, tear it in two, uh, rip the Bible apart, uh, rip uh, the the impact of, of what it means to be a bishop in his church apart. I mean, there were several things about Gene Robinson that were satanic. The, the, the homosexual part of him, the, the smallest piece of it, but his willingness to commit adultery the first time with his wife and his daughters, to me, was the most problematic part. See, I don't think that uh, whatever you think about homosexuals serving as bishops in a religion, that's, that's another conversation. But one of the things I'm fairly certain of in the requirements for the priesthood, in the, uh, in the Episcopal Anglican world, and in the uh, pastorate uh, of the evangelical world, is that adultery is pretty much always looked down upon. Nobody would talk about this. Nobody would mention the fact that the man had fathered two daughters by his wife, who at some point he was, and I don't mean to be unnecessarily graphic about this, but at some point he was sexually attracted to. See, I think Gene Robinson, while many people looked at him and said, oh, he's the face of liberated homosexuality, I think he's just the face of your typical uh, sex addict perv that doesn't know uh, how to keep it in his pants. So he he marries a woman that he's obviously attracted to and over an extended period of time has uh, sexual relationships with her uh, to the degree that at least on two occasions it turns into full-blown pregnancies and they have, they have daughters. And at some point he starts 
and tangling around the edges and playing with uh, forbidden fruit and goes in a different direction. But in the discussion within his church about whether or not he should have ever been bishop, you never heard anyone on the, on the cable news circuits, and everybody covered this. MSNBC covered it. Fox News covered it. CNN covered it. CNBC covered it. They all covered it. They were all like, oh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, watershed of gay rights issues. Will this bishop break the, the Christian cycle and be allowed to be a leader and be an active uh, uh, homosexual who's behaving homosexually in a relationship with another man? You didn't hear them say, well, but what are the qualifications of the bishop in, in the Episcopal Church? Is fidelity, if you are a married uh, priest, is fidelity to one's spouse necessary uh, to serve in that capacity? See, the Catholics just took care of it and said, just don't marry. And I, and I think that they found out to some degree that that doesn't exactly work. But in this, in this scenario, they're allowed to marry. And in other and in evangelical circles, your pastors are allowed to marry. But would it be the custom to get a spiritual advancement in your field of service or ministry if you were out sexually entangling yourself with people other than your spouse? See, nobody ever called Gene Robinson on the issue of adultery. Everybody was talking about how he was gay, whatever that meant to him at the time. Was he really happy? I'm not sure. They kept saying that he was. But what they meant by that was he was having sex with another man. And having sex with another man evidently was this cutting edge, wow thing. Now, they've been doing it since Sodom and Gomorrah, so I don't know how cutting edge it is. But evidently, it was this new thing, and all the media covered it, and they were like, uh, this, is the, this is the debate of the century about uh, Christianity and, and sexual behavior. And in reality, it wasn't a debate about really that at all. It was about one man's inability to keep a commitment to a wife and to a family that he had entered into a lifelong relationship with. And, and is anybody shocked that he wasn't able to live up to the commitment to this new person? See, we have this idea, and I, I had some conversations with some, some fellow New Yorkers last week. We have this idea that marriage is just supposed to be this expression of love to one another. But marriage is not an expression of love to one another. There are a lot of things that marriage can be described as. I think one of the most dishonest ones is that it's just an expression of love to one another. Because it's, it's not an expression, and it, it is about far more than just your emotional, uh, I've got the butterflies feelings of love for this human being. And it's, I don't know, is it weird, is it odd that he says all of us sincerely intend when we take our wedding vows to live up to the ideal of till death do us part, but not all of us are able to see through to see this through and until death indeed parts us when you when you take those vows are you saying i'm i'm aiming for the ideal are you saying oh i hope that i get there or is there something more assertive than that that's being expressed what is your opinion on that when you take the when you take the uh, the, the vows in the marriage ceremony are you aiming at the ideal of till death do us part? There's this, there's this uh, new film that's coming to, to theaters one night only tomorrow night uh, across the country. It's put out by Focus on the Family. And um, there's, there's a very uh, specific point that's made in the film. It's called Irreplaceable. It's talking about the value of a family. And there's this very specific point that they make in this that marriage is not... Um, it, it, it's not, uh, it's not a, it's, it's not just a legal agreement. It's a vow. It's not just a, I hope so. It's a, I will. And the truth is that Gene Robinson in all of his dishonest glory, when he says, well, we all intend, it's just too bad that we can't get there. He purposefully chose not to get there. Now, maybe, maybe the other guy's the one leaving him. I don't know. 
But when you say you're going to break a commitment, you're doing that at the adherence of understanding that there was originally a commitment. And when the commitment gets broken, it's, it's not some mystery that fell out of the sky. There wasn't a, a big barrel of monkeys that opened up like in Toy Story 3 when they bombed the thing and all the monkeys come running out and chase the toys across. Not, none of that. No, no flying monkeys out of the sky are breaking up marriages. Marriages are breaking up because one or both parties say, I will not do this anymore. Not because I can't do this anymore. It's because I will not do this anymore. No one's putting a gun to their head saying, uh, you will divorce him or you will be uh, blown away. Now, they may feel overwhelmed by their emotions. They may feel uh, uh, you know, a sense of uh, uh, inability to live with themselves if they, if they feel like they're compromising you know, uh, freedoms that they want to have. By living with the other person, there's all kinds of things that they could blame it on and say, well, I'm being forced. The truth is they choose to. And should it come as a surprise that a man who left his wife in an adulterous affair for another man and abandoned his daughters for the illicit sex of a gay union uh, years down the road goes, oh, well, I guess I'm going to leave this union, too, because it's not exactly working out for me. We were told this was the watershed, proof that Christianity and homosexual behavior could work together. I think it proves something else, but proves something I said a long time ago. That is, the gay unions are illegitimate substitutes for marriage. They are never the same thing as marriage. Stay with us. 